fun people of YouTube. I'm wearing a white top and my sheets are all white. So I'm gonna blend in with the bed. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized. Anyways, I hope you had a nice week. I finished the show that I was in. I was in it for five weeks and now I'm done. Now that that's done, you guessed it, I am back into the wild again. I am I am fun employed and actually the next few weeks I'm gonna be helping out my friend with like wardrobe and PA stuff for her indie film So that I'm really really excited for but other than that I am fun employed And of course that really gets me in my head cuz it's the end of the year I'm like, okay, I have to do all of these things that I told myself that I'm gonna do for this year So I'm just packing my schedule with like a lot of things. I'm also getting close to 30 Which is also really really nerve-wracking so, you know, with the spirit of feeling really, really confused, I think I will talk about what it's like to be a Korean actor now in 2022. Korean, Korean actor, ah, sorry, I cannot enunciate. In a nutshell, I feel very, very confused um, because I came to New York 10 years ago and before that I lived in the States for two years in elementary school and all of those years that I've been in the States, they didn't want any Asian actors or Asian American actors. Like they just didn't want us, unless you're Lucy Liu. Exotic, but hot, but not fresh off the boat. Asian American, but no conversation on your Asian culture. Just being American, whitewashed. But still exotic. Or they wanted someone like Kim from Miss Saigon, where, you know, they're going through a lot and they need, you need like this hot white boyfriend to suddenly show up and save your life. <laughs> Those are kind of the things that were available for actors like me and now all of a sudden they're like, okay, we want you, a real authentic Korean, a real authentic Asian person. But what they're actually saying is they want K-pop stars or they want Koreans from Korea who's already a celebrity there. So what does it mean for Asian American or Asian actors living in the States? How do I belong in that? And I think it can be really tricky for Korean actors living in the States to kind of fit into that mold of what is selling right now because all of these stories are from Korea like why is it that we don't see a lot of Korean American stories out there although they say that they want to hear Korean stories I have the skepticism that I wonder if it has to do with Americans exotifying Asians all the time and the industry is doing this thing where they want to check the diversity quota they, they have to check the Asian checkbox and I don't think they're intentionally doing this, but they end up choosing an Asian person who's white adjacent. And that is colorism. <coughs> Just there are things to think about there. Oh, and don't even get me started on how they put all the Asians in this jar, this small little jar called Asians. And um, <laughs> like, I've auditioned for Southeast Asian roles. I'm like, what? They really don't know. I don't think that they know that they don't know how to read Asian people. I think they think they know, but they don't know. Because if they knew, I should be on the big screen. Right now, and you wouldn't see me on YouTube, you would see me on Netflix and everywhere, but... <laughs> you don't. And all the while, I'm thinking to myself, what are the younger folks doing now? I'm... I have no idea, because growing up, I had to whitewash myself to fit in. But now, because being a minority, being Asian is in, are they trying to be more Asian now to fit in, to, to be acknowledged, to feel like a part of a group? Like, are they performing Koreanness, whatever that means? Like, what are they trying to sound like or to look like? When I go there, I get a little worried. There's just so much to unpack and there's been such a hunger to see Asians or Asian Americans on screen on the big stage and it's so overdue so like a lot of things are happening. There's so many questions. It's like exciting times but also what the fuck? <laughs> so yeah, that's my spiel. I'm sure I'll come back to this and talk more about it um, and I'm really curious what other people think about this as well and love to have more conversations on this. Uh, so if you're watching, please reach out to me. I'm really curious about what you're thinking. <sighs> Anyways, I am done for today. I'm gonna have to go outside and do my wardrobe duties. So yeah, see ya. Bye-bye. Okay, wait, I really wanted to show you guys this. So my friend, she sent me these beautiful flowers. <sighs> They were downstairs in the lobby and I was like, oh my God. I teared up because I didn't know that I needed flowers until I got them. I was like, this is what it feels like. <gasps>
But anyways, yeah, she sent them because it was the end of my show and it was just so sweet. And my roomie, my roommate, she went to Mexico and got me these spirit guide animal figure thingy. You know, like the, um, the spirit guide animals from Coco, the animation? She saw this in a store and she was like, oh, I think this would be your spirit guide if you had one. I was like, just so sweet. So, yeah. Thank you, Tena and Andrea. <laughs> these women in my life really, truly light up my day. Truly. And how to sleeping again. She just sleeps all day. You just sleep all day. Oh. Ooh.